All right. Behold, Sasquatch. It's Sasquatch. All right, so we're gonna see if we get Sasquatch going. Um, I think he needs a few parts. But I, I did cut with him a little bit a couple uh, last year. Yeah, yeah, when I did the big tree job, but I didn't have I couldn't keep him running. He'd run for about 15 minutes and then he'd die. The other the other one started doing the same too. So let's hit that decompressor. Got my safety sandals on. Everything yeah, okay. Wanna be like that, eh? Oh, I'm not starting that on a freaking stone. Difficult. <sighs> Good and relaxing on my day off. Pull chainsaws. Yeah. bad for a free chainsaw <laughs> an ms270 for free mind you this chain is so dull it is so dull but they seem to be running better right now both of them now mind you once they get warmed up and i start cutting with them but i, I do want to like replace all the hoses I don't know about the carb on this. I think the carb on this one's fine, but it, it's worn out enough that it's getting hard to adjust because the screws are getting worn out. So probably if I did two, I'd like to get a compression check done on each one. Uh, this one's a beast. This is the 270. Considering that these been sitting since I think what April was the last time I started them, and like that's it sounds like a pretty good running saw, but it's it's not. You can see when I tilt it, it bogs, so that's an adjustment issue. Plus, there's not very much fuel in there, so. But when they warm up, particularly this one, it will die. It will not stay idling. And it, it, it'll go and it'll just blow, 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 and die. So maybe the coil on this one might need to be replaced. What I'm thinking, what I'm thinking, yes, I do have the thinking capabilities, is that when the coil heats up, coils weak could be the same issue with these again i know this saw i've had it for 13 years this saw i only did one big tree job with this saw and uh, it only made it about halfway through and then it was just it was just too boggy i couldn't keep them running uh plus my chain is dull <laughs> like i sharpened it that that chain god knows how many things it's hit <laughs> you know when i got it this chain is practically brand new i got one tooth that hit a hit a rock or a nail or something but um, no, the only thing I could say about that saw there is when I get it running tickety-boo, that's going to be a beast of a saw. Like, it's, it's, a not a beast in the sense of, like, a, you know, if I get that 70cc beast, but, uh, the Husky. But if I had the Husky 72.2cc plus these two 50ccs and this one with the ported head, um... Like, if I don't have to rebuild the entire saw, that's fine. But I might have to do, like, say, new carbs on both just to, you know, keep headed free. And all new hoses. I think that'll probably solve the problem after I check out uh, two other things. But I got this saw for free. Paid 50 bucks for this saw uh, 13 years ago. And I got the bars for free. 
that chain for free. It's a worn out chain. This chain I bought new. It just, it, it, you know, I didn't want to invest into the saw until I knew it was going to run really good. But considering that there's moldy old gas in that one, moldy old gas in that one from the spring, and I just put a little bit of new gas in each, not bad. So you can see they, they've got compression. They run. How tired are they? I don't know. What I got to do um, is pull off the muffler, the muffler, uh, and have a look at the pistons and see if it's all scored. I have a hunch that both of these are probably, well, this saw has been dropped off of roofs and it's all cracked and everything. But this saw, when you clean it up, it actually looks not too bad. It's just really dir dirty and dusty right now. Um, yeah, so that's where I'm at with these two guys. Uh, like, again, they sound like they run okay, but uh, once I start cutting and stuff, they, they just bog out. Um, and you'd say, well, it's just an adjustment issue. No, there's something else uh, because... Like I say, last year when I was doing those Manitoba maple, uh, finishing up the Manitoba maples that we'd fall, uh, that was the last big job these two guys did. And we cut down about 150 Manitoba maples with the average size about that big. There was uh, one base there, it was probably six feet at the base with about five stems like that, or five branches coming out like that. It was like five trees in one, a eh? Manitoba maple. And it took us two weeks, Paul and I, my, uh, you know, usually see him every now and then. Um, uh, he had his Husky 65 CC. I had these two guys. Uh, he pretty much did all the falling of the big stuff. And I just went around with this thing and just ninja shark and just kind of killed everything with the MS 260 here. Uh, I love this little saw. Um, and uh, this guy, I fell quite a bit. I probably fell about 50 trees with him, various different sizing. But it just wouldn't stay running. Like, it'd run for okay, kind of boggy for about 15 minutes. Uh, I've adjusted it the best I've, I've been able to adjust it. And you get it running okay, even when it's warmed up and you do the, the final adjustment on it. It runs okay until, it, but then it just starts to bog. So I'm thinking, like, you know, like, the, probably the float and the fuel lines all... Uh, even if it, the, the, there's not, it's not cracked, what happens with some of this old fuel line is it gets really weak, and when you start, it starts to squeeze in on it, suck in on itself. So I think it's just ma regular maintenance for these saws, but I, I do want to get the... I'm going to take them to the still shop um, in the fall if I have a bit of money and say, okay, test everything. You know, test the coil, test the... Cause I, I can sort of test things, but, you know, whatever. I, I'd rather... I just don't have time, right? Um... And, you know, I don't want to buy a whole rebuild kit if I don't need it. If the compression is, say, okay, well, the saws are getting tired, but you probably could get another year or two out of them before you have to rebuild it, rebuild it. Okay, well, let's do all the hoses. Let's do the carburetors. Let's do, uh, you know, all that stuff that just keeps it running. Put new filters, new mufflers on them. Um, I mean, I could, I could hot rod this saw up to a 280, from a 270 to a 280. But uh, I kind of want to use it the way it is. But if the, the price is the same for the rebuild kit for the 280 as it is for the 270 and the 280 fits in this, well, smart shopper, you're going to go 54 cc's versus, uh, you know, if, you're, if I got to have to, if I have to carry a heavier saw, it better be a bigger saw, right? But uh, yeah, so that's where I'm at with these guys. So, it's, but you see how good they start for sitting, we're into August almost. Uh, say May, June, July, August, or April, May, June, July, August, four or five months have been sitting, you know, you know, whatever. Now, normally I don't leave the bad gas in there. I just, cause I know there, there weren't going to be work this summer and, and, uh, trust me, everybody's been after me to, when this saw went down, particularly this saw, it really hurt. It harmed me financially because this saw has done so much work. Um, but man, that what a win on that one. What a win on that one. Even if I put 250 bucks into that saw, the equivalent of that saw is $1,100, $1,200 now. <laughs> this saw, which you could still get an MS-260, is a $1,000, uh, we're talking Canadian prices here, is a $1,000 saw now. And if you get the one with the heated handle, it's like 11 or 1200 bucks. 250 bucks into that one, 250 bucks in that one. Rebuild everything.
You know what I mean? Like, uh, who wouldn't do that, you know? Uh, used, if you can find a good one used, uh, these things still go for about 500 bucks. Used uh, 300 to 500. Uh, these, if you can find one in good working condition, most of because the, these are, these are quite an older saw. I don't know if they're the nineties or whatever, but, uh, kind of a nice looking saw the way they did that one. Uh, that's a slightly newer style, I think, but this, uh, yeah, this is, this, is, this saw here. I'm very excited about this saw. Like it does cut even with the bad chain. I try, like you can tell it's a faster saw. So when I put a really good, like this saw cuts really good. Uh, with that new chain on there uh, both have 16 inch bars but this saw is like you know it's it, it's it's pretty good for its size for 50 cc's uh the biggest saw i've ever used just so people can get an idea of uh is probably i i think of it now my buddy when i i, I did the video on the husky uh 272 xp uh that was the saw he had and him and i were doing stove wood with it one day and i was like oh man this pig dog of a saw hey it cuts fast but holy geez it's a pig dog right it's heavy uh this one's a little a little bit heavier for sure that one's a little bit heavier for sure this one you work with that all day this you use that for the big stuff you know and then go to that guy uh, for the rest but yeah so that the 72 cc's is probably the biggest saw and then my buddy's husky uh I think it's it's 65 cc's. I'm not sure what model, if it's a 365 or what it is. Uh, I use that one a couple of times a year. Uh, here, Reg, go finish up that tree. I got to do this, you know, that kind of stuff. But yeah, that's where I'm at with these two guys. Just thought I'd show you.